Hello, 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 and you are tuned into the Promoting Precision Show, and I'm your host, Miss Angie Mims, right here on the Big Gospel Express, 1570 AM, and we're certainly hoping that you are enjoying this wonderfully and beautifully created day by our sovereign God, Jesus Christ. I mean, it is absolutely gorgeous here in the Chicagoland area. And I'm, I'm not going to lie, sunshine makes me happy. And this <laughs> weather is just, oh my goodness, it just makes me happy and it changes my mood. Um, we are so elated that you are tuned into this show because we have some awesome, awesome guests in this show. And we've been talking about um, homosexuality uh, for the last few weeks with our good friend Sir Walter Jones. But before I go to that, I want to give a big and huge shout out to Fox 32's Monique Carradine, formerly of Fox 32, who came out to my home church, New Greater Exodus, on this past Friday and did an absolutely tremendous, tremendous job at the progressive movement. I am just so grateful, and I'm still getting texts now, just moments ago, about how they just had an awesome time with her. She did a marvelous job with expounding on money and how God wants you to prosper and how he wants you to live in, a, in abundance, and so I'm grateful to her. Also grateful to my good friend, uh, Dr. Adeyemi Fatoki, who came out and talked about health in so many different facets, and you know, um, he wows the audience with his knowledge, with his steadfastness, and even his ability to stay around and answer everybody's questions. And so to both of you, to our keynote speaker, Monique Carradine, formerly of Fox 32, as well as to Dr. Fatoki, I say thank you, thank you, thank you for making uh, Promoting Precision so, so very proud. Um, again, we do have Sir Walter Jones back in the studio with us on today. Say hi. Hi. Hey. Hey. And we, <laughs> we've been having a great, great yeah. time. Okay. Um, Sir Walter Jones, for some of you who are just tuning in, is a prolific elder and uh, a great, great um, musician. He plays seven instruments and has written over 1,500 songs. And so he's got some fresh perspectives for us on the subject of homosexuality, and so I'm very, very honored to have you in the studio with Happy us to today. And then we also have Pastor Lavelle Brown of Mercy Seat, um, one church that I can honestly say I've been fellowshipping with for man, it's been about 20 years or more. Don't tell it all. Don't tell it all. <laughs> and he is here in the studio with us as well. And so I'm gonna be honest with you, listening audience. Yes. I think, you know, ahead of the game sometimes when I listen to both of these two, and both of them are very, very smart and they're intellectuals, but I can't lie, sometimes, you know, you got a funny bone. And I purposely <laughs> got a Kojic man and a Baptist man. Kojic Baptist. <laughs> Baptist Kojic. We have a Kojic <laughs> Baptist conversation in here today on the subject homosexuality. So how are both of you feeling? <laughs> I think we might agree with this one. <laughs> You might agree. The Lord. We well, agree. We well, also do doxology. I, <laughs> I am so um, interested in your perspectives, and as I begin to mine uh, with both of you on how we can uh, expound on this subject uh, in a way that our audience will not only receive it but either change their ways. Mm -hmm. or go and help someone change their ways. I want them to hear what you have to say mm -hmm. when it comes to this approach. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I'd, I'd like to hear from uh, Pastor Brown. I've been on a couple times, and yeah. I want to hear his perspective, and then uh, then I can kind of jump in after that. I know you can. Oh. It's like playing double oh. dutch with Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> ah. yeah. uh, so basically, you want my perspective. Oh, well, my perspective is the same perspective that God has, you know, uh, and it's real simple that uh, in the garden, God created man, and then he said it's not good for man to be alone. Mm -hmm. He made him woman, and he brought her to Adam, and, and Adam called a woman because she was bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. And, well, my perspective is if God wanted man mm -hmm. to lay down with man, he would have never made woman. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, at any time uh, you have a man that's laying down with woman, uh, with, a, with a man, it is uh, it is not productive. That's why God said, "Be fruitful and multiply." And so, in being fruitful and multiply, man cannot multiply with man. Man can only <laughs> multiply. It's called procreation. Uh, they can only procreate with a woman. 
And that's just my, 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 my thing about it and my personal thing about it. There is nothing about a man that could actually flip my switch. <laughs> nothing. Nothing. And so uh, it, it is, it is, it is. It is counterproductive for man to lay down with man and woman to lay down with woman. It is just totally against what God uh, God preordained. I think we know that. And I think that, you know, uh, I'm so grateful for, like you said, you know, God, in essence, not making any mistakes. He purposely meant mm -hmm. for man to be hooked up with a woman. My question then would be, you have a homosexual, you have a lesbian, you have a, a mm -hmm. transgender, you have this person mm -hmm. who knows mm -hmm. all of this already, mm -hmm. but they still wrestle with it. How do they begin to approach this very, very serious subject and actually be in the will of God, in essence, changing? Well, the first thing you have to do is, I've, I've had a few uh, members in my church that were wrestling with this situation. But like I tell them, I don't preach against the person. I preach against the practice. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, that particular thing is just a trick of the enemy. I did a series uh, not too long ago uh, entitled The World of Make-Believe. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you really look at it, uh, it is all, all it is is just, just flesh making you believe that it is right. Because the Bible said there's a way that seemeth right unto the man, but the end thereof mm -hmm. is death. And what it is, even if you look at the practice of it, and and you realize that most people who are uh, um, who are of this particular persuasion, they're literally calling God a lie. Mm -hmm. They're literally calling God a lie, saying that God made a mistake. Mm -hmm. And but since you know God don't make any mistakes, mm -hmm. how do you help them? Is you got to help them realize God don't make mistakes, and God is not pleased mm -hmm. with this type of behavior. Mm -hmm. God is not pleased, but there, but in that God's not being pleased, Him being sovereign, Him being wise, He always gives us a way of escape. But Pastor, I, I know all of that. I'm the homosexual now talking. I know all of that, uh -huh. and I've been trying, you know, for a while now to get out of this, you know. But I feel as though I was born this way. You, you know, know. Then I would have to tell you, you lying. Uh, well, you what do you not, have to say about that? First of all, you don't look gay. Not at all. I don't, you really don't. Oh, <laughs> I, I don't. <laughs> unless, unless we're talking about being happy, because you, you're extremely happy. <laughs> yeah, I am overall happy. But she did say the sun makes she, her happy. She did I did say, say that. that. You said she did that. Say it. Well, let me say this. I'm a homosexual. I did. I said I'm a homosexual. I said yeah. that. Oh, yeah, I know what you say. I can say I'm white all day. <laughs> I can I'm say I'm an Escalade just because go. I sit in the garage and go vroom, vroom, don't make me an Escalade. But I'm curious to know how do we help these people. Absolutely. Walter, you said uh -huh. that homosexuality, this lifestyle goes against nature. Yes. What mm -hmm. did you mean by that? Sure. With the word nature. Absolutely. I fight. I don't really fight. They they fight. The atheists. They, we, we go back and forth on Facebook all day long sometimes until I just get tired of, of tossing my pearls to swine. Mm. And then I go to bed. Mm. Uh, I don't suggest other people do that, but but they, they are absolutely for homosexuality. The reason why they're for it is because they're against Christianity. Mm. They're against God, period. All right? Mm. So they have to be against that because we're against it. Mm. It's, like, it's like the Republicans who are against Obama. They're against Obama, even if Obama is right, they're against him. They're not against the stand, but they're against him. him. Okay? Because if he says the sky is blue, they'll say, no, it ain't blue. It's kind of off bluish. <laughs> yeah, so it's yeah, a little it's a turquoise. Little, it's not, <laughs> not, not blue, it's turquoise. Right, right. You see what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, and yeah. so, so the, um, it's a, so they said, no, it's not against nature. I said, so here's the thing. The atheists believe in science uh, uh, exclusively. Okay? Mm. Exclusive science, meaning everything has to be proven. So I said, well, here's the thing. Uh, um, the theory of evolution is against homosexuality. They said, no, that's not true because uh, there are many species that, that, that exemplify homosexual uh, attributes. I said, okay, yeah, I read that. I understand that. Mm -hmm. Now, we're talking about humans. We're not talking about birds and, and dogs and all those things. They sniff on each other. They do things like that. I said, but here's why it's against nature. It's because if God, in his, well, let's say, Let's, let's act like there is none since we're talking to the atheists, all right? Okay. If you're saying that nature has been selected naturally, mm -hmm. then why would nature put a penis on a being 
and put sperm in it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sperm is used to reproduce. Procreation. Yes. Mm -hmm. so why would he put it in a, in a penis and then present that penis to another penis? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. That has the same agent in it, spermatozoa. Mm -hmm. And then they use it with each other and it don't produce do what it was made to do. Yeah, it does not produce e anything. E exactly. It does not produce anything. So how could you be say that that's natural selection? Mm -hmm. and that's saying a natural selection is ridiculous because it, you can't reproduce with a with a positive. Can't re pro reproduce with a positive. That's an explosion. <laughs> yeah. That's what it is. Okay. No, that's a mess. That's yeah, it's like licking your finger and putting nasty. it in a, in, <laughs> in, in, in a socket in the wall mm. and Bam, there it is. So it is against nature because it is absolutely, it does not add up scientifically. It, it does not add up to anything positive and productive. And yeah. if, if you know anything about God, God is always about productivity. Right. Everything must produce. That's right. in, in, in the beginning, he said, let everything produce after its own mm -hmm. kind. Right. So how can you produce if a, if a man is laying down with a man and a woman is laying down with a woman, there is nothing that can produce right. Oh, nothing that can come out positive, but emotional right. feelings. Right. It's a it's right. a it's an emotional feeling that is invoked, mm -hmm. and I find out most people, uh, not all, but I, there's a there's a there's a select few that I've talked to that have told me it's usually they've gone this way because they have been rejected mm -hmm. by the opposite sex and mm -hmm. can't find or you mm -hmm. know have been hurt or have been wounded right. or have been mistreated right. and has. Fail this way. Right. I've I've known some people who have not. I know a young lady who has turned into lesbianism, and the only reason why she was uh, she turned that way was because uh, she was not affirmed right. who she was by her right. father. Yeah. Her father did not that. affirm uh -huh. that she was beautiful. Mm -hmm. Her father did not affirm mm -hmm. that she was attractive. It takes that father to affirm yeah. who she. Is. And because nobody affirmed that in her mm -hmm. life, mm -hmm. she said, I must be mm -hmm. something different. Mm -hmm. And I'll try to find my way. We have both nature mm -hmm. that Walter talked about, and then we also have environment that plays mm -hmm. a contributing factor to a person's uh, sexual preference, it seems, these days. Bishop Larry Trotter said on Today in, in a media release that, you know, uh, the state of Illinois is, is in some aspects trying to prevent this law from being passed. Mm -hmm. And um, he said that if this law is passed, um, mm. that we will certainly be experiencing rippling effects, I quote, uh, like never before. Oh, yeah. Um, mm. This is something that is extremely serious. And when he made this press release and, and made this statement, I was uh, keenly interested because a lot of our churches are affected by this. Very much and, so. and, and I have found that, you know, a large part of our churches are um, having homosexuals, lesbians, in leadership positions. Mm -hmm. Sure. And this is affecting our, our, our culture. This is affecting souls. This is affecting children. I took my son out to dinner on last night, mm -hmm. and um, our waiter was clearly gay. And mind you, I've never had this conversation with my five-year-old in depth at all. And this will be the third time that he's asked, what is that? Uh, not it, what is this, what is that? What, what is, that? is that? And he says, what is that, Mommy? And I said, well, you know, he, he, he's, he's, he's our waiter. He says, well, is he a boy or a girl? And I said, well, he's a guy. And so at this time... I'm, I'm on pins and needles because children say what they think. Yeah, very much so. <laughs> and I didn't want the waiter to put anything in our food. <laughs> <laughs> and so as he walks away, as the waiter walks away and he switches and he's got to bounce his walk, my son Ooh, then look says... look a little too hard. Hi, my son. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, my son says, you know, uh, well, why doesn't he walk like a man, Mommy? And so I'm saying I like to say that kids mm -hmm. are noticing without you even educating Absolutely. them on this. And so something is seemingly unnatural sure. Very much so. about this thing. Yeah. It used to be, and I think we said it you know, before off the air, it used to be a time in which uh, it was not so prevalent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was, it was I, I would hate to say it was the dirty little secret within the family, but it wasn't as prevalent. Right. 
but the one place it never showed up was it was never shown uh, in the church uh, as it is now. And I think, you know, it's a it's a shame because, you know, um, how, how do you help them? Well, your, your previous question leads to the first, leads to my, uh, my first, very first uh, realization is you got to want help. Mm-hmm. You got, I mean, why would you go to the doctor and tell the doctor you got a illness and then the doctor prescribes you medication, gives you a prescription, you take the prescription home, uh, but you never get the prescription filled. Mm-hmm. And so that's what you have. And you have a lot of individuals who come to church uh, who are in this particular persuasion. And some pastors, believe it or not, won't even talk about it. No, they're free. Talk about it because that's membership, that's yeah. tied, right. that's uh. money. <laughs> that might even be the choir director or the musician. That's right. Mm-hmm. That they're talking about, and like I tell them, you know, um, let let you know, let, let, if you're a man, be a man. If you're a woman, be a woman. Uh, be what God has created you to be. But unfortunately, uh, just like when you spoke about Bishop uh, uh, Bishop Trotter, there is there was another set of preachers uh, who controversially uh, are putting a divide yeah. uh, on this situation because they're saying it's not a. Uh, Christian issue, it is a moral issue. Mm-hmm. And I thought it was so strange that you have people who will sit back and justify mm-hmm. nonsense mm-hmm. Uh, for the sake of saying, just because this law get passed, it ain't going to affect your church. Yes, it will. It will. Mm-hmm. Yes, it will, because now you have young men in the church saying, so now it's all right to be this way. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, and they're turning into a civil rights issue, actually. Uh, there are a group of pa- pastors in Chicago who came forth. They were on the news the other day saying that this is right. Um, I read an article on how the homosexuality law has affected the uh, state of Massachusetts. Mm-hmm. Okay, They went from how it affected the schools mm-hmm. to um, uh, government to the hospitals everywhere, and you would be shocked at what this thing has done to, this, to the city, to the state. Um, it affects your children greatly. It yeah. will. Oh uh, yeah. Because they said there was there were cases where they were they they were uh, changing the curriculum in school where your children they're forced like they're forced to read the the um, theory of evolution. Mm-hmm. Now they're forced to read uh, on the sensitivity sure. of of homosexuality. But you can't. But we won't allow them to pray in school. No, you can't pray. No, that's an But you can. <laughs> but you can force folks to learn about homosexuality. Right. Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of yes. ironic. Yes, yeah. uh, I just saw the news the other day where the, uh, a lesbian kiss was 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 demonstrated before the this this grammar school class. A what? It was a lesbian kiss, uh-huh. and they, I they believe yeah, it. and 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 the, the parents reported it, and, and the, the school says there's nothing we can do about it in this state. This is legal, okay. Um, so what's happening is the children are being forced to read and understand it so that they can be desensitized mm. to, to to accept it. So Say now, if someone says you're a faggot, you're this or you, then you go against it, or even even churches preaching against whatever. Now the children will will co- join forces and, and say, say it's all right. This is okay, yeah, right? And the reason we talked about Obama, the reason why he came forth, is because his children. He said out of his own mouth. I was against it, but my children have friends, and they came to me and yep. says, "Why is it that my friends Absolutely. cannot?" Yada yada. And then he, he said, quoted that I believe in Huffington Post. Yes, yeah, so he had mm. so so now <clears throat> everybody who changes their mind on it, if they change their mind because someone they know mm. is has this, okay, mm-hmm. or a friend of a friend of friends, something like that, and so they we have become desensitized to it. So it's gonna get there's gonna be a chance, eventually, where Pastor Brown will have to be hauled out of his pulpit because he refused to marry a gay couple. Well, I'll tell you, I fixed that already. <laughs> oh, you can forget that. I'm going to tell you that right now. now I got just, some bail money, brother. I, 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 I'm, not really told, I I'm glad you got some bail money because I'm not already told my church I don't go for that. Nope. Yeah. No can do. I can't go for that. Uh-uh. <laughs> Go ahead and say it, girl. Say it. You ain't saying, girl. Say it. I was like, hey. Okay, back up. You know, and, 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 the, and the whole thing about it is, like I tell everybody, if you're going to believe the Bible, you cannot pick and choose what you choose to believe. You got to believe the whole Bible. Yeah. And the last time I checked, 
And I've, this is an old saying. God didn't create Adam and uh, Adam and Steve or even Yvette. He created <laughs> Adam and Eve. He wanted them to reproduce. There was nothing. That is, I, I, I tell folks, there is nothing sexy about two big hairy men kissing. <laughs> There's nothing romantic about that. I want to read a scripture uh, coming from First Corinthians. Tell us how you really feel. Chapter, the ninth verse. It says, "Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Mm. Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor adulterers, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality." Say it again. Uh, okay. <laughs> It says, do not be deceived. Mm -hmm. Neither the sexually immoral, nor adulterers, read, nor read. adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality. Read. Hold it right there. Hold it right there. Okay. Nor men who practice what? Homosexuality. Mm. I feel like one of them old preachers, you know, back in the, back in the day. Yeah, yeah. Read, sister. Read. read. <laughs> I don't know. That's exactly how I feel. Yeah. It says, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And so, in essence, this is a lot of uh, people. You know, oh, you got a laundry list. You know, we, we've got over 7.7 .7 billion people in this world. Uh -huh. But, verse 11 does say, and such were some of you. But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of God. So I pose to you, gentlemen, mm -hmm. is there hope? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. I have a question for Pastor. Oh. Go ahead, Reverend. Yeah. You, you know sure you want to answer? answer? <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? This is the Baptist culture. Yes. Today. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, sir. Sure. Yeah, uh, sure. yeah, yeah. Now. <laughs> <laughs> now, tie my bow tie. I'm tying my bow tie. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Coming around in a Honda Accord. All right. Now, <laughs> hatchback. Woo! Now, pass hit me in my knee. Go ahead. Pass. <laughs> my Cody. Man, he, ain't, he ain't like this at all. Uh -oh. um, um, now, now, let me say this to you. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this question. We preach against homosexuality. We we're firm and we're quick to, they call it homophobia, that we talked about that a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. But why aren't you preaching against these other sins in your pulpit? I don't know what sin I don't preach against. Oh. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm wide spectrum. I don't pick what sin you don't preach against. I, pre I preach against the whole thing. Mm -hmm. If it's adultery, I'm going to preach against it. Yes. If, it's, if it's fornication, I'm going to preach against mm -hmm. it. If it's homosexuality, I'm going to preach uh, against it. If it's uh, stealing, gossiping, lying, backbiting, I'm a pre if it's against if it gets God's word, I'm going to preach against it. So you do it. Yeah. But well, why aren't we doing that? I, I, I can tell you why. Because we're too busy trying to make folk feel good oh, that's in the church. Oh. I tell folk Folk, we can dismiss now. I, I tell folks constantly, my job as a preacher, and one of the things I train my, I try to train my associate ministers to understand. And I, I, I gather this this thought from a preacher on the south side, uh, Pastor McKee, McGee, Pastor McGee. He had a saying, and I have adopted it in my ministry. He, and one of the things he stated uh, at this one particular conference is, our job as preachers is to comfort the disturbed. Mm. But to disturb the comfortable, <laughs> and so like what what we're supposed to do is if you're comfortable in your sin, my job is to mess up your bed. Yeah. So you'll get up out of it and you want to change. But you know, I tell everybody, I'm not perfect. And since I'm not perfect, I know I got some sin issues. Mm -hmm. I got some sin issues that I still deal with. Yeah. And the thing that I tell everybody is, if I got something that I'm dealing with, I know for a fact you got something that right, you're dealing sure. with. Right, right. And so why don't we remember what the church initial oh. job was? It is a spiritual hospital Thank you, sir. for folk who are spiritually sin That's sick. It. It. And when you are sin sick, you go to the hospital. And when you come to the hospital, you try to get delivered from what is is your illness. So wait, 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 wait. Nancy, he, wait. He's here. Wait. I want you to look under the table here and see if we got some offering there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking. He's right I'm, there. He's trying he's, to get us to he's, look he's, offering. He's right, he's right, he's right but, there. But it's the truth. So are you saying we, the church is, is wasting some time, they're wasting time in church doing a whole lot, and then we spend this much on the altar call? Oh, yeah, this much, this much. They're holding up two fingers. Yeah, two fingers, by the way. Together. Yeah, yeah, They're yeah. close together. They're close together. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, but but the, but the thing about it is, we can we can, if we go back uh, and just remember what the whole uh, 
uh, thing that Christ set the church up for. It is not just, it's not a social club, it's not a gathering place, but it is a place of worship. And when you when you come in and you worship, the Bible said they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Which means when you worship in spirit and in truth, that means you come in and you lay it all on the altar. I see. So so what what type of preaching will save someone like this? Uh -huh. Or or get them so excited exactly. to want to change. See, because some people want to change right away. It takes but if change they, is not an event, yeah, it's a process. Right. So that's yeah. why I say it, it gets them to think, okay, I know what I'm doing is wrong. Even though I'm struggling in this, I know that it's wrong and I'm trying to do something because I'm hearing I'm hearing a word. Because mm -hmm. what Paul says about uh, uh, faith comes by hearing. hearing. And yeah. hearing by the word, word of God. And, yeah. But see, a lot of people, got it's just like taking a shower. You don't get clean unless you stay underneath the water. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You, and you just don't just stay there five seconds. Sometimes yeah. you got to stay underneath the water. Yeah. Let the water hit you. That's it. Let the water run down. You and then you got to grab the like soap. It? Why you not looking at me when he's preaching over here? <laughs> How dare you get this man up in here and uh, preach like this? Hey, no, I got my anointing yesterday. I got to get another. Yeah, you're gonna have to get a fresh one. <laughs> I mean, but, but that's what it is. We have to understand. It is a like like Angie said. It is a process, and yeah. nobody wants to stick through the process. Right. I think the problem is in this new this new age, and I, I've said it before. We have this new bring that mic. Uh, we got this new name it, claim it, blab it, grab it, call it, haul it mentality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we want we want instantaneous gratification, Microwave. but we don't want to do what God said to do uh, uh, and, 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 and that's stay under the word, yeah. stay under the anointing, stay under the blood. You just can't get, sometimes you got to go back again. So that's why I remember the old yeah. time. So I know, let me read you back to the Kojic where, you know, take me back to the right. old that's right. time way, you know, right, right, right. Take, take, take me back. Sometimes we got to go back because we so stuck in this new quick, quick, fast and hurry. I tell folks in my church, I say, y'all be in such a hurry to get to church. You hurry, you hurry up and get dressed. You hurry up and get to church. You hurry up and sl uh, jump in the parking lot. You run in the church. You sit down, hurry up, try to find your seat. And then you get in a hurry for me to hurry up and finish preaching. Yeah. No, 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 no. Listen, Won't you stay a while? Listen, we have been talking about homosexuality with Sir Walter Jones, the Kojic man. <laughs> and then we also have the good reverend. Dr. Pastor, Brown. Pastor <laughs> Dr. Lavelle Brown of Mercy. We hope that you've been enjoying this conversation. And I mean, it just got really good. But I, I got to tell you guys, um, if you do this again, I'm not lifting your offering. <laughs> okay, I'm telling you that now. So um, no problem. You know this will definitely be uh, voluntary. I'm gonna take five percent. You know, <laughs> Jesus asked for ten. Yeah, and so you gonna take five? I'm gonna take five. I don't want to okay. overdo. So he's a half price preacher. Yeah, okay. Man. <laughs> Now you know I'm Baptist. I'm sorry. <laughs> you want the whole thing? Every dollar. You know we we believe in taking it, taking to take what the Lord gives. Yes, Lord. We yes. love a love a liberal yeah. offer. You I want you to give um, true supporters of promoting precision a shout out. Lamont Williams and Johnny Williams. I thank you so much for coming out and just being men. Those are men. They're not um, homosexuals. Hundred percent pure beef. Huh? Hundred percent. Pure and beef. There you go. Yes, and so uh -huh. I'm saying thank you, thank you, thank you for coming out. I have enjoyed being with you guys. Oh, the pleasure. You know, anything for you. Anything. I, I yeah. really, really did. And you guys, uh. Mm -hmm. Perfume smell. I like that. Uh <laughs> that's what that was. Yeah, so he got Dracar on. And, you know, I can't. <laughs> Man, that's not Dracar. That's curve. Oh, curve. I see. He said, you got curve, man. <laughs> he said, I thought he said Dracar. <laughs> you know, I ain't heard that since I was. It's been a while. <laughs> Ooh, 17. Well, I got some brute by Fabian J. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we hope that you've enjoyed the show, and we look forward to bringing you more on next week right here on the Promoting Precision Show. Peace. God bless. Thank you for tuning in to the